Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com and today I want to talk to you about video game balancing. Now one of the biggest issues facing video games is getting the right recipe of making something difficult but not so difficult that players will rage quit a game. It is no easy task and there are no shortage of unfair difficulty spikes or strange moments of abstract annoyance in video games both young and old, so much so that their tales of controller snapping moments become internet legend. Well, for not my friends, because I, as part of a court-ordered community service, am here today to help you through these awful dark times and out the other side to a brighter and better future. Don't spend your time researching and slaving away, just come gather round and let old father time here teach you a thing or two as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com and these are 10 impossible video game levels made easy with one simple tweak. And if you know these little tips and tricks, then don't be annoyed as this is just to try and bring everyone else up to your clear and apparently godlike skill level. We can't all slay foes and fanny like you, my lord. So with that in mind, let's get on with the list. Oh my god! Oh. The whole infected with raid! It's this dark fantasy mobile RPG that's sending them all crazy. I can barely hold them back. The amount of strength that they have from all the mobile gaming. I mean, in season one, apparently you, with the battle pass, you can win rewards and upgrades like free energy refill gems, upgraded artifact sets, and new epic and legendary champions by competing weekly and daily challenges. It'll never stop, but what the hell are we supposed to do? Scott, we're sure trapped now! It's alright, look, I have an idea. I'm gonna send them a text telling them about the free content they'll get for Raid Shadow Legends if they have Amazon Prime. Now, if you download Raid and log in before March 22nd, you'll get three Void Shards and four superior potions! Well, to be honest, look, you'll get even more content if you're a Prime member for free until April, including six-star legendary attack artifacts and a three-day XP boost! Look, it's working already! Oh, thank God! Oh, we've made it to the safety of Delaware! Look, I didn't know that by using my special link, they would get access to all sorts of different things, including 100,000 silver, two clan boss keys, ten mystery shards, and a free champion called an adjudicator. Your treasure will be waiting here, but be quick, it's only available for the next 30 days. Number 10. Mike Tyson's Punch-Out Back in 1987, aka the best year in existence, aka the year I was born, boxing fans were gifted the amazing ability to go up against the heavyweight champion of the world, Mike Tyson, without having their ear gnawed off or being killed in the ring as would probably happen in real life. Now you would have to work for it though as Punch-Out was no joke, and things were about as funny as terminal illness when you got to Tyson because he could knock you to pieces in mere seconds. All it took was one punch from the champ to turn you into a chump. So how are you possibly going to get around all of his defenses? Well, my friend, you've got to learn about how to do double damage. Now, this isn't simple by any means, as you will need to read Tyson well, but punching the opposite side of the body that Tyson throws his fist from will indeed do double damage. It's not much of a tweak bar, don't get hit for the love of God, but knowing this extra damage output might see you floor the giant much, much more quickly. Number 9. The Simpsons Hit and Run the final level in The Simpsons Hit and Run is easily the most difficult in the game, and while this is something that most people would expect, it still took absolutely no prisoners when it came to dishing out the pain. The reason this level was so difficult was because there was so much going on in it. A tight time limit, an obstacle to dodge, objects to collect, and a spaceship to destroy at the end, which led many to crash and burn way before they came close to seeing the finale. So how do you get the best of this? Well, by solely focusing on straightway and shortcuts. Before you attempt this mission, fully explore the town and identify all of the roads that you'll need so you can avoid redoing this mission numerous times. Then, as the mission starts, ignore the chaos going on around you and just stick to the tried and tested run. Take advantage of the jeep's speed and hit the jumps, but just be careful of hard landings, otherwise, well, everything's gonna melt down around you in a mere second. But apart from that, good luck. Number 8. Kill Zone 2 the final boss against Radic in Kill Zone 2 is one of the hardest boss battles in recent memory, and there is likely a pile of broken controllers somewhere as a result of this stupid 
idiot. However, while he is incredibly hard to take down, there are a few things that you can do to ensure victory, such as channeling Obi-Wan Kenobi and always making sure that you have the higher ground. Throughout this fight, you're going to have to continuously battle against a horde of minions while Radek takes pot shots at you. Now, while you're downstairs, you will want to make sure that you're not sticking to cover as it is easy to get overwhelmed. Instead, use the statue of Vasari to absorb gunfire, moving from side to side, killing Hellgast as they make a move on your position. Now, the sniper rifle is your best friend in this fight, so use it to hit Radek while upstairs. This will make him run away, leaving you plenty of time to mop up his minions. Move to the far left corner of the map closest to Radek and as you inch up bit by bit, always stay above him, and this way you'll always have a clear line of sight to him falling back through the map. It is not easy, but it is a damn sight easier knowing this. Number 7. Kingdom Hearts Boss fights are designed to be difficult, but there's always a way to win the battle, even if it does take multiple attempts. Although you might end up questioning whether such a helping hand has been programmed into the Sephiroth boss battle because he is bloody hard to take down. At least he's optional, I guess, but still, let's focus on clipping this angel's one wing, shall we? What you need to do is, well, not exactly exciting, but a ton of grinding. Don't go into this battle unless you are level 70. Doing otherwise will waste you a ton of of time. Also, make sure that you have the following MP Rage, MP Haste, Critical Plus, Strike Raid, and Second Chance. With this combination of getting magic through damage taken, extra damage dealt in different states, and a much needed get out of jail free card if you take a massive hit in the form of Second Chance, you have your best loadout for trying to survive this onslaught. The rest might be down to you, but this is your best bet of taking Mr. My Sword is definitely compensating for something out of the picture. Number 6. Final Fantasy VII now, I know that this technically isn't a level, but please allow an old man his foibles. One of the most frustrating, but at the same time most rewarding moments of Final Fantasy VII is taking on the monstrous super bosses and coming out on top. However, if you're looking to take on the likes of Ruby and Emerald Weapon, you best be prepared to deal with some absolute billy, because this pair will dole out one-hit kill moves and, in the case of Emerald Weapon, instigate a 20-minute time limit on the fight. This especially is a pain in the ass, because you you'll need to be constantly on the assault if you want to sink this waterlogged weapon. So how do you make this experience a ton easier? Well, you get the underwater materia. I know that many of you will now be screaming, but this is obvious, Jules, we all know about this. Well, here's the thing. How did you, as a kid, find out? I bet you anything it wasn't actually by exploring on your own means, but likely someone told you or you read it in a guide. And so with that in mind, I'm just trying to help out those few adventurers that are still perplexed by this one million in HP boss battle, so go easy on me, alright? It's not a cakewalk to get the materia in the first place and does require you to beat Ghost Ship, but battling Emerald without a time limit turns this boss battle from almost impossible to something significantly easier. Number 5. Golden Eye 007 the first secret level in GoldenEye is also one of the most difficult ones in the game. The level is based on the film Moonraker, which means that the weaponry has been changed to match the film, aka guards are now equipped with the Moonraker lasers, US AR-33 assault rifles, and a ton of hand grenades. The guards' accuracy has also been ramped up along with their arsenal, and there are just unbelievable amounts of them. Plus, to top it all off, old Metal Mouth Jaws here is roaming around the level looking to turn 007 into double oh my bloody spine! So how the hell do you beat this level with the odds so stacked against you? Well, there are two ways. One, you can grab a laser and shoot Jaws in the face 15 times to put him down and make the stage a lot easier. But the other way? Well, it's time to get cheesy, my friends. If if you manage to lead a guard to the glass case containing the needed guidance data, they can open it for you because they are idiots! It might take a bit of time to maneuver them into this position, but it will completely remove having to fight Jaws and you can beat this otherwise quite daunting level with a lot more ease and trust me, not having to fight Jaws is its own reward. Number 4. Pokemon Gold, Silver and Crystal when it comes to gym leaders who are notoriously difficult to beat, Whitney stands above all else. And why is that? Because she acts like a roadblock to the casual player. In all honesty, for a seasoned Pokemon player, it's not too difficult, but if you look online, all you will see are stories of Whitney and her bloody mill tank. Now, to be fair, if you go up against her with your standard issue Pokemon, you are not likely to win this fight. So in order to beat this, you'll need to understand how to be super effective, which means exploiting 
mill tank's weakness. And what's this over here, you might ask? Well, it's a man willing to trade you a machop. Isn't that lucky? As this machop at level 18 has low kick and karate chop, which are both super effective on mill tank and will make the fight a damn sight easier. It is a brilliant workaround that many players would miss if they don't explore every nook and cranny, but do yourself a favor and visit this geezer on the top floor of the Goldenrod department store and get to trade in. Number 3. Castlevania the original Castlevania game on the NES is one of the best games that the system offered, but it was not easy to beat by a long shot. You couldn't save and return to a checkpoint, so if you died at any point along the way, well, you had to start all over again. Even getting to Dracula was rough enough, but beating him was so hard, meaning that dying at this stage would hurt even more when you know you're just going to have to slog through the entire game just to face him and likely die again. Luckily, there are ways to combat this beast that everyone needs to be made aware of, that of the power of the holy water and a bit of preparation. Don't even think about going into this fight without a surplus of hearts and a whole font of holy water dripping down your moistened bum crack, as this super soaker supply will allow you to block projectiles, meaning that you can just jump over them, and you can stall this fanged fool in place when he changes into his final form with the holy water. This stall and smash approach coupled with a ton of health will make this fight just about bearable. Now go out there and knock his sharpened teeth out. Number 2. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas Grand Theft Auto San Andreas is notorious for the difficulty no, the impossibility of the Supply Lines mission. The mission was so hard, in fact, that the voice actor who can be heard throughout the level absolutely hated it. The mission sounds easy enough, though, fly an RC plane into a van to blow it up, but the problem came with controlling the plane, which was ridiculously difficult to pilot, and the thing ran out of fuel on a whim. Plus, of course, there's a time limit, because why not at this bloody stage, right? But in order to beat this, you need to learn about gliding. Using the throttle all the time will rinse your fuel and make the plane harder to control. Going a little slower but maintaining accuracy is key here, so despite what the time limit insists that you must do, take your time and fly with only a few teasers of the accelerator. Trust me, it makes this so much easier. And number 1. Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link one of the best things the sequel to The Legend of Zelda introduced was the concept of Dark Link, arguably the hardest boss in the series at this point, because this was a battle against yourself, the same speed, skills, and powers, who blocks your attacks and dishes out his own almost straight away. So why not turn this arduous battle of skill and timing into one that, well, anyone can beat, by simply going to the left corner, crouching, and stabbing Dark Link in the crotch whenever he gets close? Hey, I never said it was an honorable way of winning, but you know what? You can't argue with the results. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 impossible video game levels made easy with one simple tweak. Let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. But before you go, I just want to say one thing. Today, we spoke a lot about situations that seemed impossible, but with the right perspective, became much, much easier. And you can apply that to your own mental health as well. There's a lot of stress in our lives, and some of it is incredibly unfair. But you know what? Perspective allows us one thing, and that is to look at situations and realize what is inside of our control and what is outside outside of it. You might be wasting a ton of energy in your life trying to change the outcome of something that you simply cannot control, and that is okay. Rebalancing your energies and being able to use them in better ways will definitely impact your life in a much more positive way. And if you need help doing that, remember you've got friends, families, professionals in the support industry. Every one of these people cares about you and wants you to do well. So go out there and absolutely smash at your big ledge. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me at RetroJ with a zero over on Twitter. And if you'd like to check out something a bit different, then why not swing by Live and Let's Dice? It's my board game channel that I've got here on YouTube. As always, you have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye. <laughs>